This is the first in a series of videos on least squares and friends. And I want to think about this from a Bayesian perspective. And I admit that when I first learned about Bayesian analysis, I had a really hard time understanding the intuitive meaning of the posterior, the prior, and the likelihood. To me, those all seemed like terms for various, na names for various terms in Bayes' rule, but it didn't really understand the intuitive difference. Until I finally realized that actually um, the uh, the prior is equivalent to the regularization term, and the likelihood is equivalent to the loss term, and the posterior is equivalent to the sum of those two terms, and from there, everything uh, became nice and easy. Anyway, so I want to think about a generative process for data, and uh, before I see any data, I'm going to think about how to generate um, a model. I should warn you, though, that uh, the term model is really overloaded, you know, like like in cricket, you say, what's that? And they go, that's a wicket. And then you say, but what about that thing over there? And they say, oh, that's a wicket too. Like everything in cricket is called a wicket. I don't know why, but it's like the same thing in statistics with this models, right? Everything is called a model. Um, so, you know, what's the generative process for generating the data? Oh, that's a model. What is the function that predicts Y from X? Oh, that's a model. So in any case, uh, just use the word model for everything and then, you know, it's all fine. Okay, so I want to think about uh, the process of generating data. So before we generate data, we're going to generate what I call a model. <laughs> it's a function, okay? So I have a function, and let's say I have some prior belief about the slope of this line. Uh, maybe that the slope of the line is kind of close to zero or something like that. And then that's my, that's my prior on this function f of x, okay? So I have, I have my prior belief on that, and then um, I have my prior belief about how data, data would be generated from this. So maybe it would be generated in a Gaussian around this, this line. Okay, so then I see the data. And here my data look like maybe they actually did come from this data generation process. Um, and then the likelihood actually tells me how good uh, my matches of this function to these data. Okay. So it's equivalent in, in that sense to, uh, to the, the loss function term. Okay, cool. So let us start fresh. And I'd like us to actually write down, um, you know, that we want to think about how the model is generated and then how the data are generated from the model, where here the word model is a function from x to y. Okay. And the uh, way that the model's generated is without having seen the data first, right? Because the model generates, something generates, the random process generates the model, and then the model generates the data. So the, the generation of the model is what goes into the prior, because you see it prior to, um, to viewing the data. And then the way the data are generated, that has to do with the likelihood, the likelihood of seeing these data given this model. Okay, so let me write that down. Okay, so let's write down Bayes' rule, and you'll see there's prior term and a likelihood term and a posterior term. Okay, now these are the three terms, and um, they each have names. <laughs> the one on the left, that's the posterior. This is the likelihood. The one with the data in it, that's the likelihood. The one that generates the data. And then this is the prior, because the prior comes before we see data, prior to seeing data. And you're probably wondering why there's no pData term. Well, here, we're optimizing for the model. So we can't optimize pData. It doesn't have a model in it. So we don't need it. OK, so if we're comfortable with this, we can take the log of the posterior. Let's find out what happens. OK, so we have the log posterior is proportional to the log likelihood plus the log prior. <laughs> 
So the log likelihood, as you know, comes from data. And the log prior comes from belief about what your model is going to look like. Okay, so um, I want you to think about trying to create what's called a MAP model or a maximum a posteriori model. So that is a model that maximizes the posterior. So the posterior sort of, you, you want to think about as, as, like I said, it's a combination of the likelihood and the prior. So the posterior combines both, combines like the whole process of generating the model and then generating the data from the model. So a map, a map model or a maximum a posteriori model is the model that maximizes the posterior. It's the model that agrees both with our prior belief about what a model should look like and what the data should look like after arising from the model. Okay, so let me write that down. Okay, so it's the model that maximizes the posterior. It agrees both with the data and with our prior beliefs. Okay, so let's write that, let's write down the map model in terms of the likelihood term and the prior term. Okay, we have specialized names for these two terms in supervised learning. Namely, the first one, which is the negative log likelihood, is actually called the loss function. And the negative log prior, that's the regularization, right? Regularization is the same thing as, um, as prior knowledge, right? Because you put regularization on the model before you ever um, see the data, right? So the log prior term, that's actually the regularization term. And then the log likelihood, that's actually the loss function. So let me write that. There we go. Now, a lot of you have heard of um, maximum likelihood. So maximum likelihood is where you don't have a prior, or if your prior is uniform, then um, that log prior term just goes away. But maximum likelihood is, is a special case where you maximize the likelihood and you don't worry about the prior. Okay, so right here where we have two terms, um, if you have no prior belief, or again, if your prior belief is sort of uniform, um, you can ignore the prior term and just look at the likelihood. So oh, let me write that down. Now, you might be wondering if um, you actually need to believe that your model comes from this prior uh, when we're doing this. Um, well, I don't see why you do, because in regularization, we usually don't believe that the ground truth actually has a low L2 norm or something like that. We're just using that log prior for convenience and trying to keep our model class simple. Well, there's nothing wrong with us thinking the same way, even if we're using the tools of Bayesian analysis. So. I don't want you to feel like you're, that you have to believe that the model was actually generated this way. Um, instead, we can simply use the tools uh, as, we, as we 
as we want to in order to benefit from them. I mean, there are some computational advantages to some of these tools. So for instance, what are called conjugate priors, like if the likelihood and the prior are both Gaussian, um, then the posterior is also Gaussian. So that's actually quite helpful um, just in terms of, of computation sometimes. But in any case, I want you to understand that in order to use these tools, you don't have to believe. And I'll show you some examples next of how this whole thing works with ridge regression. Thanks.